Welcome to this video where we will discuss growth factors involved in angi angiogenesis. And in the last video we talked about angiogenesis and kind of the steps, the process of angiogenesis into new tissue, injured tissue. One thing I forgot to mention in that video is that we talked about tissue injury. Um, but there are a lot of reasons why angiogenesis would happen. Um, let's say for example a big one is tissue injury but also in cancer and you know as this cancer blob is proliferating and expanding and expanding this you know let's say there's just a blood supply this big into the area well these cells are going to need more blood and so this cancer will cause angiogenesis to happen and cause more blood uh, vessels to um, come around and, and expand to kind of support this cancerous growth. Um, and you know that could be a big that, that can be a good mechanism to understand because then we could you know block this pathway and you know, this cancer can't grow without blood. So you know that would be a good a good treatment if we could figure out how to do that. Another thing too is as this angiogenesis happens, um, and we'll talk about this a little bit in this video, but as this as this angiogenesis pathway happens, what is right here? Well, this is either cells or the extracellular matrix. And in the extracellular matrix videos, we talked about how the extracellular matrix kind of helps with cell motility, proliferation, uh, differentiation, all that. And you know, in order for this a blood vessel to be formed and grow into this, this extracellular matrix needs to uh, die or um, be removed. Some of it does removed. So we're going to talk about you know the growth factors and the process of this of this uh, you know this process a little bit in this video. So VEGF, which is vasculoendothelial growth factor, and blastic fibroblast uh, sorry, basic fibroblast growth factor, FGF2, are um, the two primary uh, or big growth factors in the process of angiogenesis. And this VEGF, these vascular endothelial growth factors, there's like version A, B, C, D, E, and there's, I think there's like 20 forms of this. So they all do kind of different things. And this um, this version C is for lymphatic VGA is just they just call it VEGF so this is by default the original VEGF so what are the properties of this VGEF so you have these vascular endothelial growth factors and they're at low levels in most tissues so in most tissues they're constantly being secreted and they are there. there are, there's a high concentration of these vascular endothelial growth factors in kidney podocytes in the sites of the kidney and in muscle cells these vascular endothelial growth factors, they bind to a family of receptors, and the receptors are the VEGFR, so the vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 1, 2, and 3. And finally, these FEGFs are released. They're what triggers the release of these vascular endothelial growth factors? Hypoxia, a platelet derived growth factor, PDGF, um, tissue growth factor beta, and tissue growth factor alpha. And these vascular endothelial growth factors are responsible, in the last video we talked about this, but they are responsible for creating, uh, um, they are responsible for this increased permeability, which causes the migration of these endothelial cells to come out. So this vascular endothelial growth factor is an important, important concept. Another thing to remember too is that these VEGFs, they bind to the receptor 2 to um, direct these uh, EPC cells. EPC cells. So this vascular endothelial growth factor, these e this pathway right here is through the vascular endothelial growth factor and the receptor receptor 2. The vascular endothelial growth factor R2 receptor kind of helps these EPC cells know where to go and end up in the right place when you have tissue regeneration.
So um, to, to learn a little bit more about this growth factors involved in angiogenesis, there's a group of proteins that are called angioproteins 1 and 2. And this and they're and they're abbreviated ang one and ang two, and angioprotein one binds to a receptor on endothelial cells called Ti two. So on endothelial cells inside your blood vessel, here's your blood vessel. These endothelial cells that line it, there's a little receptor called Ti two, and these angioproteins one bind to this. Here's ANG1. They bind to this little receptor, and that causes the recruitment of these periendothelial cells. And in this previous video, we talked about um, these periocytes that need to be recruited for the capillaries, and the smooth muscle cells need to be recruited for this for these large these larger blood vessels. So this process, this angio one uh, protein binding to this Ti2 receptor on this endothelial cells, that's how these parallel endothelial cells are recruited. And this PDGF, this platelet-derived growth factor, it participates in the recruitment of smooth muscle cells, um, also to, you know, analogous to these periendothelial cells for these larger vessels. And this TGF beta, now I think I misspoke when I talked about this before, um, these, this, I said tissue growth factor, this is actually called transforming growth factor, but the transforming growth factor beta, it enhances the production, production of these ECM proteins. So, you know, as this, as this um, blood vessel is being expanded into this extracellular matrix, you know, these extracellular matrix has to die and be removed and modified and, you know, this transforming growth factor beta, it enhances these ECM proteins that are going to be rebuilt and remodeled after these blood vessels kind of move into the area. And now let's finish up this video by talking about this fibro fibroblastic growth factor. So there's fibroblastic growth factor, FGF2, and there is about 20 of these. Uh, but there are about 20 of the. There's about 20 of these. Um, the FGF1 acidic. There's a acidic uh, fibroblast growth factor and a basic fibroblast gro growth factor, and that's version two. And then there's another one that's a fibroblastic fibroblastic growth factor, and that's seven. So I want to talk about this one, uh, this one, and this one. First, we'll talk about this this fibroblastic growth factor. It's also called keratinocyte growth factor because when you have, uh, let's say this is your skin here, and you have layers of skin cells up here, and these are called keratinocytes. These are called keratinocytes. The cell type that makes up your skin are called keratinocytes. So when you injure this keratinocyte, let's just say, uh, you know, you injure this somehow or hurt some of these tissues and you get a wound or, you, you know, you get cut on your skin somehow. Um, this fibroblastic growth factor 7 is secreted and causes these keratinocytes to migrate, migrate to the site that's injured and also divide. So this kind of uh, this uh, growth factor helps stimulate these keratinocytes to kind of hurry up and 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 you know divide and migrate and get to the area and 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 start the tissue repair process. And this FGF2 or this basic fibroblastic growth factor, this causes um, dividing or proliferating of uh, endothelial cells, endothelial cells. So if we come up here to here and um, we talk about the proliferation of endothelial cells, so like as these cells, in the last video we talked about this, but as these cells migrate out of this capillary sprouting tube, they start proliferating to create all this new blood vessel. That is 
fibroblastic growth factor number two that is responsible for that. Okay, so that wraps up our conversation, uh, our video about the growth factors involved in angiogenesis. We'll see you in the next video.